Well, I've got an interesting project to work on today. I have a large rhinoceros beetle. This is uh, Megasoma. It's from South America. Someone had pinned this with the wings open and it wasn't a very good pinning job. And they also glued this wing cover on. You can see this glue in here. And I want to remount it with the wings closed. Um, some of these large beetles, especially the goliath beetles, they pin them with the wings open and the wings are kind of bluish, kind of metallic, and they look kind of nice. I don't think the wings open actually helps this specimen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the wings back up. This is actually an interesting opportunity to see how this works. The wings have a hinge here, and uh, they somehow lock open, and the insect can fly and then uh, when they land they use their hind legs and they push these wing tips up and fold them back underneath the wing covers so that's what I'll be doing there see they fit just like a like an airplane on a carrier um, but the first thing I want to do is pull this glue out of here it looks like it's uh, Elmer's or something water base I'm not really sure. I got this specimen in someone else's collection and they're uh, divesting of themselves of this collection so I'm selling off the specimens. And I'm trying to get these things whipped into shape so I can uh, make them saleable. Yeah, it seems like it's water-based glue. I'm not really sure. I suspect that this specimen was not properly relaxed when it was mounted and that's how the wing cover got broken. Uh, you got to make sure these things are soft before you work on them. Uh, the specimen had been dried for many years. I just put it in this container with some wet towel on the bottom and sprayed it with water. Uh, you can get away with that with these beetles. Water won't hurt them at all. Couldn't do that with a butterfly or a moth that would mess up the wings. Actually I don't think any of that show now. There's some on the wing cover too. Get that off. Nothing wrong with repairing a broken specimen but I think it's broken because you weren't patient enough to get the specimen relaxed to start with. That's not good. I don't think any of that will show now. Let's see. Try this out. Fold that wing under. does a little bit. Try and get that off of there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, uh, in order to get the legs in the right position on these big beetles, uh, you want to make sure all the joints are flexible. And they get kind of stiff. Remember, these are dried muscles in here. And especially right here, it's called the coxa. Uh, this allows the limb to rotate up and down. There, I just broke it loose. And then this joint. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. If you look right there, you can see how that whole piece right there just rotates. this one. Oh yeah, that's loose. Try this one. Uh, 
Oh, it's a little stiff. There we go. Yeah, see, you want the leg to be able to rotate like that. Now we'll get the hind legs loose. There we go. And this one. And if you're relaxing a big beetle like this, and it's just these parts here, the coxy are frozen, just keep it wet till it softens up. Yeah. Now this one, the antennas also weren't laid out. Let's see if they're there. Unfortunately, that one's missing the laminate. They have these little um, pieces on the end here, like this. See? There's a little bit there that unfolds. So this is missing the tip of the antenna. Now, I think I have another one of these that I could use for parts and I could replace that little bit of antenna that's missing. Okay, and then here's the foot that was missing, the tarsi goes there. Okay. Now, with such a big beetle, you're going to need a large pen. And uh, this is a number nine pen. You can see it's pretty large. And that should be long enough to fit all the way through that body. <clears throat> but it goes through the right wing cover. Is the classic way to pin them. So I've got to get this all in position before I put the pin in to make sure it's all lined up properly. This wing cover should fit over here. Get it uh, it's hung up here somewhere. Yeah. No, it's hung up somewhere. There we go. That's it. All right, so we see the wings are not sticking out. It's all lined up properly. So I'll put a pin through. This is actually good since this wing cover's loose. The pin will hold it in place. I probably won't have to glue it. I'm going to make sure that's in the right position. There it goes. Okay, so like always when pinning, you want to get the pin in straight, both in the horizontal, like this, and side to side. So when you put the pin through, you want to make sure that you miss interfering with this leg here. If you put the pin through and it hits the leg, you're not going to be able to position it. So I want to aim for the middle. So I'll have a look here and see where the proper position is on the bottom and then transfer that to the top so that would be like right about there. I want to make sure I get this nice and straight. Okay, it actually looks pretty good. Maybe tilt it forward a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'm going to push it through. Yeah, that looks good. All right, now uh, I'm going to brace the body to help keep it from moving around while I'm working on this. And I want to get the legs out in a nice natural position. That looks good. I'm going to do this other one. Again, I'm always looking for symmetry here. I think that looks the best. This one needs to go up a little bit. Yeah, that looks good get these back legs lined up properly. Oh, it's got to come out a little bit. 
bit. There's uh, spines at the base of the um, uh, tibias that are very convenient for hooking the pins into. Now I want to get the head lifted up a little bit because these legs in the front tend to point down. So I'm just lifting the, the whole thorax up actually. Yeah, that looks good. <clears throat> now the tarsi have little claws on them and I like to be able to show those. Uh, you can see their two little claws. So I'm going to prop this leg up like this. I'll get this one propped up the same way. Support in the back. Support on the back. Let's see if it looks symmetrical. Yeah, looks good. Now, I can usually stick a pin in between the two claws and twist it around like this so that you can see the two separate claws. I like the way that looks. I'm going to brace this tarsi in a little bit so it's more straight. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Now this one's not attached yet. I'm going to have to glue it on. So I'm going to get this tarsi straightened out so that when this thing is dry I can just glue it on. And um, it's pretty easy to do. Again, I'm going to stick a pin between the two claws so that they're separated and then brace it so the front of the leg is um, stabilized and then put a pin to brace it and then sort of bend the tarsi back so that it's straight. Yeah, so that should go on all right. This uh, tibia here is a little hot, high, so I'm going to get it lined up. And then finally, um, we're going to pull those antennas out so we can see them because they are an interesting feature. And then the one that's broken, pull that one out too. And I'll see if I can find a, a replacement part. I don't have any trouble replacing parts on bugs if it's the same species or at least very, very similar, close to the same species. Now, the rest of these tarsi I'm going to position, again, with the pin between the claws to pull them out. There, see how that tarsi is nice and straight? And you can see the claws. This one's hooked around, so we'll do the same thing here. Put a pin between the claws and uh, bend it around so that it's straight. Prop that one a little bit. There. And then the side ones too. Middle legs. Bend the tarsi around. It's going to need to be propped. Yeah, that looks good. <coughs> and then finally on this one. Prop it. Okay, now we'll just check for symmetry. This wing cover is sticking up back here a little bit. I want it pushed down. Maybe if I just brace that, it'll uh, it'll dry in place. That looks pretty good. I think, uh, I think we're good to go. Uh, it's, thorax is a little bit crooked here. I can pull that over a little bit. Yeah, that's good. So we'll let that dry 
and um, then we'll uh, pull all the pins out and see how it turned out. Now it's been a couple of days, so I can pull these pins out. The specimen is dry. I have a female of the same species, and her antennas are intact. Unfortunately, this female, all the feet are broken, all the tarsi are broken. So I really don't think it has much value. I think I'm just going to use it as parts bug. So I'm going to take the antenna here and break it off and glue it onto the male. I think they're about the same size. The antennas look really close, so at least the specimen will look intact, and it actually will be a, a Megasoma elaphus uh, part. So it'll, it'll, parts will be correct specimens. So let's see how this leg is it in the straight enough and in the right position. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's going to work just fine. All right, I think I'm going to do the antenna first because that's a little more complicated. In order to get these repaired properly, you have to get the right piece. The antenna is made up of segments, and it'll often be broken between two particular segments, of course. And so you have to figure out which one that is so you can get the correct count. Uh, now this antenna fragment has some segments on it, so I'm going to count them here quick and then I'm going to come right back. All right, so there's three um, smooth segments um, at this on this antenna. There's a fuzzy one and then there's three smooth ones. So when I remove this one, I want to remove it in the same location. And it's this antenna, correct, on this side. So I'll take my very fine tweezers, and since this is dried, I should be able to just break that segment off. And I'll just be very careful not to lose it, make sure it drops onto this so I can see. Oh, came off just great. There it is. Now, in order to get this tiny little bit to stick properly to there, <coughs> I'm going to need to glue it, and I'm also going to need to prop it with pins to support it while it dries. So, here's my blue gel water-based glue. And Now, what I do is to attach these, I'll take a little bit of glue on a pin, and I'll put it on the tip where I want it to attach, and then I'll put a little bit of glue on the part. So when I touch the part to the tip, it will um, stick, and then I can position it with the uh, pins. So I'm just going to get a tiny little dot of glue on this pin. There. I'm going to touch it to that tip, kind of move it around back and forth, and that makes a little bead on the end of that part. There's like a flat tip and there's like a little bubble of glue on it. Now I'm going to take this. Now these are kind of slippery, these parts, so if you have to handle them carefully because they'll slip right out of the tweezers and they're easy to lose. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm even having trouble grabbing that because it's so slippery. Whoop, see? I'm going to try a bigger tweezer with a flatter tip. No, nope, it just slips right out. There, I've got it. Oh. Actually, I'm going to put a pin where I think it's going to set just so it doesn't fall right off. <clears throat> okay, I've got it. Put the glue on. And touch it to the segment. There. I need to 
get it into position before it falls off. Ah, got it. Now it's not symmetrical with the other one. So I need to play around with this a little bit. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on it. All right, I got in there close with my magnifier and checked it, and it is uh, it is attached to the proper position. So I'm just going to leave that sit for half an hour or so to make sure it's good and dry. And then, all right, so it's been a couple hours. So this antenna is dry. Yeah. That looks really good. All right, I'm going to get this front leg glued on. And uh, we'll do the same thing. Put some glue on both surfaces. Pretty generous glob here on the... There's one segment left here, and then on the tarsi, it's a big piece, so I'll put a good generous amount of glue on it, I'll set this into place. I'm going to prop this. pins at the back. Make sure that's lined up. See how that looks. Huh. Right now we'll make labels, fresh labels. Uh, normally, we put a label, we write on the top of the label, and you put the pin down through it like this, and you can read the label underneath the bug. Well, since this beetle, there's no space underneath, the way to read the label is you pick the specimen up and flip it over like this, and so I will put the writing on this side so that I can just pick up the specimen and look at it and see what the label is. Um, I'm going to use two here. Guatemala is the country. And the location here is Point Berrios. And the date is October of 1983. 1983, we write out the year. So 100 years from now, there's no confusion about which 83 it was. And then the species is Megasoma elaphus elaphus. Megasoma genus, always capitalized. Species, lowercase, elaphus. And I guess it's a subspecies, elaphus. There's probably some regional subspecies since these beetles are found in a wide area of the tropical Americas. And I'll just leave them together like this so that it can be red and they will be hidden underneath the beetle so you won't see them. All right, now this glue has dried. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really good. Yep, I like it. So now we'll put the label on, and we're going to put the label on uh, this way, so that when I pick up the beetle and flip it over, I can read the label. And the label's not going to show. That's my teaching collection. 
This is the Megasoma Alophis that I have. And it's the same size, but um, this sort of, they have kind of a fur on them. They call it pubescence. And on this specimen, the fur, the pubescence is more worn off. You know, the beetle's running around doing its thing. It brushes against things and it rubs it off. And this one's in a little better shape, so I'm going to put this one into the teaching collection. Get the tarsi in there, right? Yeah. Just to lay flat. There we go. Yeah. And that looks that looks really good. These are all rhinoceros beetles here. These are dung beetles up in this corner. These are goliathine beetles. They're African. Some of these are considered the largest insect, certainly the largest beetles. And then there's some dune bugs in here, some really pretty ones. Uh, these are the rhinoceros beetles that live in the United States. This is Granti from Arizona, and this is Tatias from the east, uh, eastern United States. This one's from Georgia. Grantis have a little bit longer horn. We have uh, Hercules, this one you've probably heard of from South America. This is Neptunus. This is an especially long, slender horned one, all black. And this is Caucasus Chalcosoma. It's an Asian one with three horns. Um, this is a female of the um, Alophis. Anyway, nice addition to the collection.